Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over reflections. Our content objective is students will be able to perform and describe how to reflect figures on a coordinate plane. And the language objective is students will be able to explain verbally how to reflect a figure on the coordinate plane. Why am I learning this? Well, it's an important for things like the creation of video games. So yesterday we did go over translation and today's focus is going to be on reflection. So quick recap, a reflection is basically a figure is being flipped across a line to create a mirror image. Okay, so first here we have a figure and notice it's going to be flipped across this vertical line creating a new image. This is what we call a reflection. So basically, again, a reflection flips a figure across a line, which we refer to as the mirror image. Let's take a quick look at a demo here. So here we have a image, which looks like the shape of an F. And I'm going to go ahead and reflect it across this vertical line here. Look what happens to the image. This is what happens. Now, watch what I do. What if now I want to reflect it off of a horizontal line instead of a vertical line? What will the image look now? So this is my pre-image, and this is the new image. So notice the difference. So now I'm just going to show you here. Here, again, is the reflection off of a vertical line. And this is what happens when you reflect across a horizontal line. So there are some slight differences. Now between the two, I want you to understand the same way translations preserve certain characteristics, reflections um, preserve certain characteristics as well. So let's go ahead and write that reflections preserve what? Hmm. Well, translation preserves size. Does reflection preserve size? Absolutely. The pre-image matches the same size as the image. So we're going to go ahead and say that it preserves size. What else? Does it preserve shape? Well, does this shape look identical to this shape? Absolutely. Even if I were to rotate it, not sorry, not rotate it, uh, reflect it, based off of the vertical line. Notice the shape remains the same. So it definitely preserves shape. And last but not least is orientation. Does it preserve orientation? Here I would have to say no, because notice this F is point is the correct F and this one is kind of backwards. So the orientation is not preserved. So notice here, Reflections only preserve size and shape. It does not preserve orientation. Okay, so now let's go back to the lesson. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually perform a reflection. It says here for number one to reflect triangle ABC over the Y axis. Well, first you have to identify where the Y axis is. You'll see here most graphs will be labeled with the X axis here that runs left and right and the Y axis that runs up and down. So if they want me to reflect this particular triangle across the Y axis, I'm going to go ahead and draw a dotted line on the Y axis like so. Now, in order to reflect, this is what you're going to do. I like to go in alphabetical order, so that's what I'm going to do. So here is point A. Notice, this is where you're supposed to reflect. Okay, so what you're going to do is count how far is it from this vertical line. Well, it's one, two, three, four, five apart. So I'm going to go on this other end and go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. So here would be A prime. So notice they're still on the same horizontal line. Okay, now I'm going to repeat this process for each point. B, how far is it from the um, y-axis? It is one, two, three, four, five from the left. So I'm going to go in the opposite direction and go five to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to go ahead and call it B prime prime. Same idea with C. It is one to the left, so I'm going to go in the opposite direction and go one to the 
right and call it C prime. Once I have those labeled, all I'm going to have to do is connect these points together. And there you have it. So again, I, I can't stress enough with reflections. I want you to ask yourself, is it preserving shape? Yes, the shapes are identical. Okay, is it preserving size? Yes, it is. Now, is it preserving orientation? Uh, no, it's not. Oops, can't spell. Orientation, it is not. Okay, so that's the main difference between reflection and translation. Translation preserves all of them. It preserves shape, size, and orientation. But with the reflection, it does not preserve orientation. Okay, it's been flipped, so it's not the same. Moving on to the next example, it says give the coordinates of the image if the given point is reflected over the given line of reflection. So first, let's go ahead and do number two. It says A, which is a 5, comma, negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and go to 5, comma, negative 3, and I'm going to go ahead and label that A. Well, they want me to reflect it across the x-axis, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the x-axis. The x-axis runs from left to right, so reflecting it across this line here. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is go ahead and ask myself, from the x-axis, it's going down 1, 2, 3. So in order to go the opposite direction, I'm going to go back on the y sorry, the x-axis, and instead of going down, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and there we have a prime. Okay, so if I were to write the coordinate rule, first I started with a, which is 5, comma, negative 3, which turned into a prime, which became 5, comma, 3. So one thing I want you to take a close look at is notice both the x's were exactly the same. However, the y's were the opposite. One was negative, the other was positive. So now let's see if that happened, what happens when we do number three, which is asking us to reflect it off of the y-axis. So we're going to first plot the point, which is at negative three comma negative seven. So negative three comma negative seven, here is h. And they want me to reflect it over the y-axis, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that line in. So this time it's across this line, this vertical line. So starting at the y-axis, I'm going to count to see how far h is from it. It's 1, 2, 3 to the left. So in order to do the reflection, I'm going to have to do the opposite, which is go to 3 to the right. And this would create h prime. So real quick, let's write the coordinate rule. We started first with h, which was negative 3 comma negative 7, which then became h prime, which is now 3 comma negative 7. So notice in this case, the y's are the same, but the x's are the opposite. So notice here, when you, when you reflect it off of the x-axis, the x's were the same but the y's were the opposite. So that's something I want you to kind of take a close look at and make sure to see if this happens again. At this point, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and try numbers four and five on your own. Okay, so let's see how well we did. Hopefully first what you wanted to do is plot the point. So here t is at negative nine comma 10. So you have negative nine comma 10, which is right here. That's our starting point. And then crossing, um, reflecting off of the y-axis would mean that if you go for 9 to the left, you're going to now go 9 to the right. And that's what's going to give you t prime, which that order pair is going to become 9 comma 10. Now, could you have guessed this? Hmm, maybe. Since it's the y-axis, the y's are the same. However, the x's are the opposite. Hmm. Okay, so now let's look at number five. Number five is we're asking, they're asking us to go ahead and reflect point R across the x-axis. So let's first graph it, so negative three comma eight, this is where R is. And then crossing it off of the x-axis, which is the one that runs from left to right, okay? 
Right now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight up. So I'm gonna go in the opposite direction and go eight down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is going to become eight, sorry, not eight, R prime. And that new order pair is going to be negative three comma negative eight. But once again, could you have guessed that? Well, if it's off of the X axis, the x's are going to stay the same, but the y's are the opposite. Okay, so moving on. Now it says to draw the image of quadrilateral ABCD if it follows the given reflection. Well, this one's asking us to reflect it off of the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line on the x-axis here. And I'm just going to go ahead and do my reflections. I like to go in alphabetical order, so starting at point A, from the x-axis is going 1, 2, 3 up. So starting at the x-axis, I'm going to go in the opposite direction and go 1, 2, 3 down. So this is A prime. Now for B, same idea. It is 1, 2, 3, 4 up. So I'm going to go in the opposite direction and go 1, 2, 3, 4 down. Here is B prime. Same thing with C, it is one, two, three up, so I'm gonna go one, two, three down. Here's C prime, and last but not least, D, we went one up, so I'm gonna go one down. So this is going to be D prime. Now that I have those ordered pairs, I can go ahead and connect the points together so that I can see what happens to the figure once it's been translated sorry, not translated, reflected off of the x-axis. So once again, let's look, okay, with this reflection, did it retain its size? Yes. Did it retain its shape? Yes, it's the same shape. Did it retain its orientation? The answer is no, it did not. So again, this is where it's different from a translation. A translation preserves all of these characteristics, but with a reflection, it does not preserve orientation. Now let's try number seven. So the instructions are very similar. However, they're asking me now to reflect it off of a, a line, which is y equals negative one. So what you're gonna have to do first is remember how do we draw this line if y equals one? There's two ways to go about it. You can read this as, hey, the line is going to cut through the y-axis at negative 1. Or if you don't remember that, you can go ahead and create at least two ordered pairs where y is negative 1. So if this is x, this is y. This is x, this is y. So we want a negative 1 for the y values. And you can put whatever you want for the x's. And then you would see, okay, 0, comma, negative 1. 1 comma negative 1, so the line is going to go horizontal. So just like I said before, it should be cutting through the y-axis at negative 1. So either way, you could do it. It's going to give you the same line. Now once I've done that, I'm going to start on the uh, this equation and say, okay, it's going up 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go the opposite direction and go down 1, 2, 3, 4. Here is A prime. Same thing with B. It's going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to go the opposite and go one down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is kind of down here, which falls off the graph, which is okay. And then here for C, it's going up 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go down instead and go 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is C prime. And last but not least, for D, it went up 1, 2. So I'm going to go the opposite direction and go down 1, 2. Now that I've went ahead and wrote down all the ordered pairs, we're just going to connect the points together. And then it's a good idea to keep asking yourself, hey, was the size retained? Yes. Was the shape, did it stay the same? Yes. Did the orientation stay the same? No, okay? So, but there you have it. That's all there is to reflections. Okay, so now at this point, I'd like you to go ahead and pause the video and try number eight on your own. Okay, so let's see how we did. So here, you're now asked to reflect this quadrilateral off of the y-axis. So let's go ahead and draw a line on the y-axis. 
and then go ahead and reflect. So here, it's off of the y-axis going one, two, three, four to the left. So I'm gonna go the opposite direction, one, two, three, four to the right. Okay, for B, it's going one, two to the left. So I'm gonna go two to the right, and here is B prime. C is one to the left, so I'm gonna go in the opposite and go one to the right. So here is C prime. And last but not least, D went one to the left, so I'm gonna go one to the right, which is D prime. Now that I have the new images, I'm just gonna go ahead and connect the points together. And there is the shape after the reflection. So once again, does it retain the same shape? Yes. Does it retain the same size? Yes. Is it the same orientation? No. It's no longer the same orientation. Now let's go ahead and have you try number nine by yourself as well. Okay, so let's see how well we did. The first thing you should have done is went ahead and drawn your line for x equals 2. Again, there's two ways to go about this. You can have said, hey, the line is going to cut through the x-axis at 2, which is going to be a vertical line. Or you could have given at least two ordered pairs where x equals 2. And the other values could be whatever value you want, as long as you're different. So here, 2 comma 0, 2 comma 1. This would show you that it is going to be a vertical line. Once you have that, go ahead and start counting. Starting on the axis, starting on the line of reflection, you're going to count to see how far it is. So here it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the left. So the opposite would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the right. Here's A prime. With B, it went one, two, three, four, five to the left. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five to the right. For C, we went 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. And then for D, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, so we're going to go the opposite and go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. So here, we're going to go ahead and connect the points together. And then once again, you'll notice the sizes are the same, the shape's the same, but the orientation is not. Now, if for some reason, I kind of got off and plotted a point down here and I ended up drawing something that looked like this. That should be a red flag. I should be saying to myself, saying to myself, hey, that shape is not identical to the pre-image. I must have done something wrong. So please keep in mind, with reflections, you should expect it to have the same shape. You should expect it to have the same size. And if you don't, that means you did make an error and you need to go back and fix it. So this is the correct image off of your pre-image of the quadrilateral ABCD. For number 10, it says point to L, negative 3 comma 2, M, 3 comma 1, and N, negative 2 comma negative 3, are the vertices of a triangle. If triangle LMN is reflected over the x-axis, what are the coordinates of the image? So here, we're going to go ahead and do what is asked, which means we're going to reflect over the x-axis. So we're going to draw a line on the x-axis, and we're going to follow the instructions like we're used to doing. So here I'm going to go ahead and first work with point L. From the x-axis, I've noticed I'm having to go up 1, 2. So to go the opposite direction, I must go now down 1, 2, which will give me L prime. Same for M. I'm noticing I'm going to have to go up 1 to the right. So I'm going to go the opposite direction, which is 1 unit down, which is going to create M prime. Then last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and do n. For n from the x-axis, I'm noticing I'm having to go 1, 2, 3 down. So that's different than the other one. So now I'm going to go the opposite direction and go 1, 2, 3 up, which will create n prime. So now that I have the three new ordered pairs, I'm going to go ahead and connect the points together to figure out what happens after the reflection. So notice this is the first time that you're going to see the figures actually overlapping. And that will happen when your line of reflection actually cuts through the original pre-image. So just to get a closer look at what this looks like, I'm just going to go ahead and shade it in for you so that you can see. I'm 
trying to do a neat job. <laughs> so here is the original image is underneath and this is the new image after the reflection. So this will again will happen whenever your line of reflection cuts through the pre-image. So now the instructions also ask for the coordinates. So we're going to go ahead and provide the coordinate rule for every single ordered pair we have. First starting with L which is going to be negative 3 comma 2. Now, real quick, let's remember that it is being reflected over the x-axis. Hopefully you remember that whenever we're reflecting over the x-axis, the x-coordinate tends to stay the same, but the y-coordinate is the opposite. Let's see if that happens here. Well, L prime is three, negative 3, comma 2. So did it happen? Yes. Whoops, got ahead of myself. You're going to see here... You're going to see here that the x-axis, not x-axis, sorry, the x-coordinates were the same, but the y-coordinates were the opposites. Okay, let's take a look at m. m was 3 comma 1 and m prime was 3 comma negative 1. Again, same x values, opposite y values. Okay, what about n and n prime? Well, n was negative 2 comma negative 3, n prime was negative 2 comma 3. Same x values opposite y values. So I want you to notice that pattern whenever we're asked to reflect off of the x-axis. Now we're asked to go ahead and change each description of rigid motion to a coordinate rule. What happens when we reflect across the x-axis? Hopefully you've realized through the examples that every time we reflect over the x-axis, the x-coordinates stayed the same. However, we always ended up with the opposite of the y coordinate after the transformation. So I would write that as x comma y yields us the same x value but the opposite of y. Now what happens when we reflect across the y axis? Quite the opposite. The y coordinates stayed the same however the x coordinates were the opposite of each other. So I would write that as such. x comma y yields a the opposite of the x coordinates and the same y value. Now what happened when we reflected across y equals 1? What, what happened? Well, hopefully you recognize that the x stayed the same. Okay. However, the y value was going the same steps away, but in the opposite direction. Okay. And what about you know, the reflection across x equals negative 1? What happened here? Well, here the y values were exactly the same, but the x's were in the same amount of steps away, but it was in the opposite direction. So you're probably wondering why this is, especially because it sounds contradicting. Here is the x-axis. It runs from left to right. The y-axis runs up and down. Now, if you think of this one, if you were to graph this line, y equals 1, it's cutting through the y-axis at 1. So that means it's actually a horizontal line, which is similar to this one here, which is why the x values stayed the same, but the y values moved in the opposite direction. Okay, same thing here. Your graph for x equals negative 1 would cut through the x-axis at negative 1, which means it would be a vertical line, which is very similar to the y-axis, which is why it's similar in the sense where the y values were staying the same. Okay, so you have to be very careful. Don't automa autom automatically make the assumption, oh, y and y, that means we're always going to keep the y values. No, you got to think about what the actual line looks like. So that is going to actually conclude the lesson for today. So thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, until next time, bye.